Hi everyone, this is Garezo here and welcome to tutorial number 5. In this tutorial I'm gonna show you how to create this nice page tear effect which is both good looking and flexible. This one will be a two part tutorial with lots of nice tips. So let's do it! This video is sponsored by Hostinger. If you follow this channel you know that I only accept sponsorships from services that I can endorse myself and that I think you can benefit from. So once again, that's the case with this great hosting company. I've been a client since 2019 and I have zero complaints so far. I have never experienced any downtime and the speed is amazing. On top of that, you get a very fast support, many other features and a great price. When I started the production of my website, I did a lot of research and testing. I tried many of those famous website builders out there, but they always fell short on something. And they can also get pretty expensive. That's when I came across WordPress. And to my surprise, you can find some top-notch website builders based on this technology, like Samplis, which is the one I use. And the best thing is, you only pay for Samplis once. So next time you're considering a website for you or your clients, consider using WordPress and host it with Hostinger. And if you use the discount code GAREZO, you can get an extra 7% on yearly plans for most of the products. If you got interested, make sure you use the link on the description of this video, as that's a great way of supporting the channel as well. Before we start, don't forget you can download the project file for this tutorial and all the other tutorials and workflow videos on my website. So let's start by creating a new composition. Let's call it Poster Setup. Let's leave it square. 1080 by 1080, hit OK, and let's drag our comp to the comp folder. And now let's start creating what would be the contents of our page. Let's hit Ctrl or Command Y to create a solid. Let's make it gray or any other color that you like. And let's just type something in the center of the comp so we have something to tear. So let's just scale it. Maybe let's just change the color to something else, maybe yellow. Let's just drag the layer holding control so it snaps to the center and it aligns properly. And now let's make it look more like a paper. So I have some textures that I downloaded here, one for the tear and the other one for the paper, which by the way are part of two bigger sets created by George Salazaris. And he kindly gave me the permission to include these two textures in the project files for this tutorial for free. But if you're using that technique in a project, I highly recommend purchasing the whole set so you have more texture variation. I'll leave a link to his products on the description of this video. And before bringing the texture here, let's just pre-compose these two layers here as well. And let's call it Poster A and hit OK. And now let's drag the texture on top of our layer here. Let's just scale it down so it roughly matches our canvas. And let's pre-compose it as well, moving all attributes into the new composition. And let's call it Poster Text Precomp and hit OK. We can hide it for the moment. And now I'll use CC Glass to bring this texture to life and also add some displacement to the content of the page. But I'll just speed it up so I don't repeat myself because I've already covered this technique in tutorial number 4 along with other nice tips. So if you're interested, make sure you check it out. Alright, so let's start creating the page tear effect by applying a CC page turn to the post array precomp. Let's close the CC glass. Let's make it top right corner. I don't know, I just like things coming down from the top right for some reason. Now let's duplicate the layer so we can have the front and back page of the effects in separate layers so we can apply a drop shadow later. So let's call this one back page and the bottom one front page. And let's just change the render to front page on this one and back page on this one. So I have these two separate pieces and now let's make the opacity 100% as well. And now we can apply a drop shadow effect. Let's adjust the light direction, adjust the distance and the softness. Again, I don't want to make it perfect, it's just so we have the idea. 
So now we have a page turn effect with the shadow applied. As we have two separate layers for the same effect, we need to make sure that they're working together. But instead of just linking the default position, what I'll do is to copy the CC page turn effect with relative property links. Let's select back page and let's just paste it here. And you can see that's now everything is linked. That's why it's red. So the only thing we want to unlink is the render, which we want back page, but we can't change because it's linked. So let's just double click render and down here, let's turn it down. Let's just scroll so you can see it better. Let's just uncheck the equal sign here. So we have the back page back. Okay, so now everything is linked. And now let's bring the tear texture. Let's just scale it down quite a lot. Rotate. Let's just place in the position that we like. Uh, let's duplicate it. Let's scale negative here so we flip the texture and let's rotate it and place it over here make maybe let's make it this one larger that's fine now let's just select and pre-compose and call it their mask hit okay now let's edit this comp here i'll create some shape layers to fill the gaps let's duplicate the shape layer and let's select double click on the point so we select them all let's move it over here actually let's do it here hit enter Control click outside click one point again and let's drag it here all I'm doing is just creating two different shape layers so we can link them to the underlying texture. So this one here is going to be linked to this texture here. And this one here is going to be linked to this texture here. Because now if we move this one, the shape layer is moving with it. So let's just make it really, really big because we're going to need that later. That's fine. So let's position it here. It's fine. Same thing to the other one. All right. So you have to make sure that this is pure black. This part here. And in this case, we still have some information on the blacks. Although we see it black here, you can see over here that we have information. So that's pure black, the shape layers we just created. And here is not pure black. So let's apply a levels effect. You can see on the graph here that we have information over here. So let's move this arrow here past this point. So we exclude this information and now we have a pure black. You can look over here, zero, 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 which is the same as the shape layer. Let's do the same thing to the other one. Let's just copy the levels effect and paste it to the other one. That's fine. And now pressing control Y, I'll create a new solid and I'll make it a very saturated green. Let's hit OK. Okay, let's move it back. And the last thing we need to do here is to make sure that the green, the green is not visible on the white area here. Because I'm not sure if it's easy to see, but the texture is a bit transparent on this area here. And we can see that the green is visible in some areas. To fix this, let's just apply a curves effect. And let's select alpha here. And let's just drag this point here until we get rid of all the green on the white area. 
So let's just copy and paste to the other layer as well. You understand better why I'm using this green background here. Just stay with me. Let's go back to the poster setup comp. And here comes the second part of this idea. I'm gonna apply a levels effect to this map. And now let's move this arrow here until we have a pure white on the image here. So now we have black, white and a very saturated green. Now I want to get rid of the blacks so we have a mask of where the paper is gonna tear. And to do this I'll just apply a simple color key and let's sample the black. Now we have the alpha channel for the tear. We can just hide it for the moment. And on the front page here, let's apply a set matte effect. Move it before the page done. Choose the tear mask layer here. And make sure we select effects and masks. So it uses the levels and the color key we just applied to the layer. Now if we move the page turn effect, you see that the bottom layer is working, but not the top layer. So let's move to a position where we can see the problem here, and let's try to fix this. Select the back page, and let's also apply the set matte effect. Move it before the page turn, select the tear mask, source, effects and masks, but as you can see it's not working. But the problem here is that the back page is set to the front page and we cannot use the front page or the back page comps as the back page for the effect here. We either need to select none or create a separate comp to hold the back page, which I think is probably a good idea. So let's do it. Let's create a back page. Let's start by creating a new solid and let's make it whitish, a little bit yellow maybe okay hit okay and let's just pre-compose this solid and call it back page texture and hit okay so to use this as the back page we also need to apply the set matte effect selecting the tear mask here effects and masks and now we can hide it as well let's just move all the layers we are hiding to the bottom here. And on the back page comp, let's just change the back page on the CC page turn to back page texture, which we've just created, also using effects and masks. That's really important for all the effects to work. And that's it. Now if we select the front page here and the page turn, so we can move the fold, and if we want to have the paper texture applied to the back as well, all we need to do is to copy the CC glass effect with relative property links and paste it here. Let's just move it before the set mat so it's more logical. And that's half of the effect. Now we need to bring the rest of the paper back. And to do this, I'll just duplicate the front page comp here Let's move it down. Let's call it borders. And let's delete the CC page turn effect. And now here's the trick. I could just invert the mat, but as you can see, it's going all the way to the borders, but we need the white area of the texture back to create this effect. So to bring it back, I'm gonna make use of the saturation here. The saturation is essentially using the only saturated color here, which is the green, which is completely saturated against the white and the black, which are not saturated at all. So let's hide it again. So essentially what this set mat's doing now is masking only the green portion of the mask layer and we are almost there. Now to bring back the white paper, I'll use this effect called compound arithmetic. And on the second source layer here, I'll use the tear mask and now we just want to use the source of the layer so it brings back the texture ignoring the effects that we applied earlier which are the levels and the color key so back to the borders 
And we are almost there. We have the whites back, but we also have the blacks back. And we don't want the blacks. So to get rid of the blacks, I'll select a screen as the blending mode. And there are still some leftovers of the mask here. We could go back to the Terra Mask Comp and fix this, but I'll just apply a refine soft matte here to get rid of this. And we now have clean edges. To finish it up, I'll just apply some drop shadow. Let's just make it like this. Opacity a little bit lower, maybe. And that's it, the effect is pretty much done. So if we select the front page and the CC page turn here, move in the fold position, we can see that the effect's working. So by the way, you could attach the fold position to a no object to make it easier to manipulate. Create a new no object and on the front page here, fold position, you just alt click the stopwatch open up the position of the low, just pick whip the position, enter, and you can control the fold position with the no object without having to click on the layer and then on the CC page turn for the controller to appear. And that's it, we have the base of the effect done. And now with the way we set everything up, if you want to change how the tear looks, all we have to do is to edit the tear mask comp Let's just open that in a new comp viewer so we can see how it affects the final comp. So let's open the Terramask comp. And now if I just move the layer here, it just updates our main comp. So you can do with both layers. You can rotate. So that makes this technique pretty flexible but let's undo everything go back to the original and let's close this comp viewer again and go back to the poster setup comp okay so if i want to use this technique to just review another page that's pretty straightforward all i have to do is to put my content behind everything but what if i want to create several tears in a row like i did in the example video that's what I'll be talking about on part 2 of this tutorial, which I'll release next week. So stay tuned, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on so you know when it's released. Also, don't forget to hit that like button if this video was helpful to you somehow. Thanks for watching and I see you next time!